Hello, and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve. And in today's episode, we take a look at how to deliver HDR content to YouTube. In the interest of saving time, here are the time codes to the different areas we will be covering. If you're already familiar with certain areas, feel free to jump ahead. Now let's get into some housekeeping. This video works off of the premise that you already understand what HDR is. If you don't understand HDR, that's okay, as I've already made a video explaining this. You can watch that with the link in the description, then come back. Secondly, let's address the elephant in the room. This video is not in HDR, as I haven't got a HDR monitor here in the office. Furthermore, to send the relevant metadata from Resolve to a HDR monitor, you need a Decklink 4K Extreme 12G or an Ultra Studio 4K Extreme video interface from Blackmagic, and they're expensive. That is why I don't simply bring my computer downstairs to my living room where I do have a HDR TV. Besides, even if I did have the playback card and I did drag my computer downstairs, my screen recording software does not capture HDR. With that said, the sequence that we will work on in this video will be uploaded separately and that will be in HDR. In fact, there will be a color managed and three non-color managed copies. And this is to prove different points which we will get into. There will be a link to all of these in the description. Next, even though you need additional hardware to monitor HDR, you don't need it to encode HDR. You do have her need the studio version of Resolve because practically all of the tools for working with HDR are only available in the studio version. Lastly, for housekeeping, what format of HDR will we be looking into? Well, YouTube accepts the PQ curve and hybrid log gamma. So for this tutorial, we will deliver HLG. With housekeeping out of the way, let's talk about your footage requirements. You will need footage that is compatible with HDR. This can be raw or log, and on some more recent cameras, HLG is built in as a picture profile option. Next, it is recommended that your footage is at least 10-bit. In my testing, I only ever use 10-bit, so I am speculating here, but if I had to guess, using 8-bit footage for HDR delivery would result in a lot of banding. Of course, there is no harm in using 8-bit footage to follow along and learn the workflow. So with our footage in the bag, let's jump into the post-production aspects of HDR delivery. In short, HDR delivery in terms of just getting your video file to display as HDR on a compatible device all boils down to metadata. That is to say that a display needs to be told the file is to be displayed as HDR and not SDR. I don't want to get too into the weeds here, but with HDR, you can have static and dynamic metadata. However, HLG is the one format that doesn't require metadata. That's because it was designed primarily for broadcast and to mitigate the risk of the metadata and video signal slipping out of sync, resulting in weird images, HLG ditched the use of metadata. The pros are that this makes it backwards compatible and very easy to use. The cons are it has very limited results. That said, while HLG doesn't require metadata, it does need to be gamma or color space tagged. So data about the data, which sure sounds like metadata to me, but it's not static or dynamic HDR metadata. Confusing, I know, so let's get practical and look at some examples. The first method we will look at is the color managed workflow. This can be Resolve Color Management or ACES, um, but we're going to look into RCM or Resolve Color Management. Firstly, let's change our scopes to display HDR values. Go up to DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, go to user and color 
and enable HDR scopes for ST2084 and HLG. Now our scopes are displaying the actual value of our signal in nits. Next, for those of you who have a HDR monitor and the required hardware from Blackmagic, click on settings, which is this gear cog icon down on the bottom right. And in master settings, scroll down and go to enable HDR metadata over HDMI. To set up or resolve color management, stay in the project settings and go to color management. Now color science will probably be on DaVinci YRGB by default. We're gonna change this to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Input color should be set to whatever your footage is. So in my case, S-Log3 and s 3cine If your color space and gamma combo is not in this list, you can toggle use separate color and gamma for extra control. I'm just gonna skip timeline for now. For output color, because we are delivering HLG to YouTube, we will go with YouTube's recommendations. So let's set that to Rec 2020 for color space and Rec 2100 HLG for gamma. Timeline color can technically be set to whatever you want. Timeline settings have never and never will determine your output color space and gamma with one sort of exception, which I'll get onto later in the non-color managed workflow. Timeline is the working color space that affects how effects and grading controls work. To show what this means, let's leave this on Rec. 709 for now and Gamma 2.4 and see how Rec. 709 adjustments work on a Rec. 2020 and Rec. 2100 HLG color space and gamma. I'm going to add a serial node beforehand so I don't ruin our actual grade. Let's do something simple like set a white point, a black point and adjust our mids to taste. Setting white point, everything seems to be behaving quite normally. When we set our black point, things start to get a little strange. You can see our highlights are stretching out as well. Um, and then when we get to the mids, things act really weird because really the adjustments behave more like a contrast adjustment. Let's reset that node and let's adjust our timeline color space to match our desired output, which is Rec 2020 and Rec 2100 HLG. Now, if we do our standard adjustments, you can see that they behave a lot more like we would expect. So just to reiterate, timeline setting only affects how our tools behave. Note that in a non-color managed workflow, this dramatic change behavior does not occur as severely or at all. My recommendation, however, is to match your timeline settings to your desired output, regardless of whether you are using color management or not. Delete that node. So with those few settings tweaked, Resolve is now set to export HLG. With my grade switch back on, an important note to make is that for me with an SDR monitor, I am viewing an SDR version of our HDR image. That is why that despite a lot of information sitting above 100 nits, I'm not seeing a totally blown out image. If you want to see these large values displayed without being squeezed into SDR, you can add an appropriate conversion LUT. Now our image reflects our scopes better with this SDR monitoring, but let's get rid of that for now. Because I kind of truly see my grade, I kept things simple here. I added contrast and adjusted white and black points to keep data from clipping. And then I also cleaned up some blue shifts in the shadows of some of these shots that was caused by the vintage Canon FD lenses that this footage was shot on. On this particular shot, I also cleaned up some extreme chromatic aberration and please note that this abomination of a technique is absolutely not how you should clean up chromatic aberration, but I just happened to get away with it with this particular shot. On a group post clip node, I did my usual vignetting settings and on a pre 
group clip node, I did my usual denoise settings. Now let's jump into the deliver tab for one last critical setting. It is absolutely vital that you render a 10 bit file. YouTube has recommendations on compatible settings, but there are others that work too. For example, H.265 works perfectly granted that you have the compatible hardware to use a main 10 profile, which will encode 10 bit. I have access to this on my laptop due to its seventh gen Intel processor. High end Nvidia graphics cards have good support for this too. On this AMD machine, however, the best settings I can do are DNxHR HQX. Be sure to use QuickTime as the .mxf wrapper did not work in my tests. If you're on a Mac, ProRes is perfectly fine too. Because we are using a color managed workflow, leaving the color space and gamma tag in the advanced settings set to same as project is fine, but you can change these to Rec 2020 and Rec 2100 HLG for extra reassurance if you wish. You can now render your video and upload to YouTube. On Windows, you can use MPC HC Media Player to confirm the color space and gamma of your video. On the video, right click and select properties. Then go to media info and scroll down a little bit. As you can see, this has been encoded as 10 bit 422 Rec 2020 with a HLG gamma. This can also be confirmed with Stats for Nerds on YouTube. Note here that despite YouTube recommending the use of Rec 2100 HLG, it seems to convert and therefore use ARIB standard 67 HLG. In my test, I was able to use ARIB standard 67 HLG in Resolve and successfully upload to YouTube. You can also use Rec 2100 HLG Scene as it's identical to ARIB standard 67 HLG. HLG is scene referred and not display referred, so it could be argued that it is better to use ARIB standard 67 HLG or Rec 2100 HLG scene as they are also scene referred or optical electrical transfer functions. However, to avoid getting into optical electrical transfer functions, electrical to optical transfer functions and optical to optical transfer functions and the subsequent confusion that it would cause, I stuck with YouTube's recommendations. Now let's look at the non-color managed workflow. Open your project settings and in color management, switch back to DaVinci YRGB. Again, technically timeline settings can be set to whatever you want as this doesn't determine your output color space and gamma. I will prove this with an example later on, but for now, let's leave it on Rec 2020 and Rec 2100 HLG. Straight away, you will notice that our image looks different. That is because of the image processing pipeline of Resolve. The adjustments of these two nodes were based on adjustments already made by our color management, which occurs before our node tree. To compensate and get a identical images, I will add a node before and use the color space transform effect. As you can see, I have it set to scammer3.cine and slog3 for input and output set to rec2020 and rec2100 HLG. Now our image is identical to before, but note that color space transform tool is not color management and does not determine your projects output color space and gamma. In a non color managed workflow that happens in the delivery tab. Again, make sure that you encode in 10 bit. Now that we were working in a non color managed workflow, we will want to pay more attention to the color space tag and gamma tag. In this case, because we have our timeline set to Rec 2020 and Rec 2100 uh, HLG, leaving these tags on same as project is fine as timeline settings is what these tags look to in a non-color managed scenario. Ultimately, in a non-color managed workflow, these tags are what determine color space and gamma. If left to same as project, then subsequently you may accidentally encode the wrong color space and gamma, which we will look at soon. 
With that rendered, let's check the color space and gamma in MPCHC and with stats for nerds. We have successfully exported HLG with a non-color managed workflow. If I left the timeline settings set to rec 709 and say gamma 2.4, the first problem is the scopes scale wrong for our intended gamma. This could lead you to adjust your highlights down to what appears to be 1000 nits on the scopes. If we change our scopes back to the correct scale, you can see you've just flattened your image. This is one of the rare cases where our scopes are lying to us, but it's because we have scaled them wrongly. Let's set that back to Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. The next problem with this is that it is very easy to accidentally leave the color space and gamma tags on same as project. If you render this out, you can see with MPCHC that this results in a Rec 709 file. The same can be seen with stats for nerds. This also proves that the transform color space tool does not determine the output color space or gamma. Similarly, we can leave the timeline settings as Rec 709 and 2.4 and make sure to change the color space and gamma tags to Rec 2020 and Rec 2100 HLG. With that rendered, you can see in MPC HC that it is HDR and YouTube Stats for Nerds reflects this, but with the scopes now scaled incorrectly, this is not a great way of working. This is why I highly recommend getting into the habit of adjusting timeline settings to your desired output regardless of whether you are working in color managed or not for SDR or HDR. I'm aware that this was a pretty in-depth video. I could have done a minimalist video with the bare bones information you needed, but I wanted to make a video that helps you to understand the concepts, settings and tools. This way you can apply it to different situations that suit your needs. But with that said, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Let me know in the comment section below so I know to cover it in a future video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. My name is Lee Dalton, this is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.